what are some notable differences between like music students or musicians in Singapore versus mm. in Europe or like Copenhagen? With music as your career and your job, I'm sure there are some parts that you don't like. Right? Budu, budu, budu. All right, welcome back to another episode of Starving Artists of Singapore, the show where we find out more about what it's like being in the arts industry in Singapore. Turn off all alarms. It appears that it's soup and fly. Turn off all alarms. Welcome back to another episode, and today we have. Actually, this is not the first time he was here. We actually shot the first pilot episode, but uh. Yep. It wasn't that great. Cause... Maybe we should show some behind the scenes. Uh, you know? No, I delete already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. But yeah, we have Jeremy Ng today. Sound thank you, back, thank you, Ben Tong. So Jeremy is currently a year, a rising year four student in NUS, yep. just like myself. Yep. He's currently studying YST, majoring in percussion. <laughs> and yes, and he's an established local percussionist. Still establishing. I mean, I'm still trying my best. You know, doing my best to becoming the best version of myself and stuff. So yeah, yeah, he's been uh, actively performing with different orchestras like here, and he's also a part of. Asian Youth Orchestra, which is like a touring, a touring orchestra. orchestra that travels all across the world. More on, more on that later. But anyways, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ben Hong, for the invitation again. Hey. <laughs> so let's start with what are you up to these days. I mean, honestly speaking, um, in the coming four to five days time, I'll be traveling around uh, again mm-hmm. uh, for the Asian Youth Orchestra because oh, I got in again oh. uh, for round two. So you have to audition for that. Yep. Then, like, do they pay you or...? I mean, they they give us a stipend and stuff, so honestly speaking, it is a, it is a great deal. Mm. And, I mean, travel, expenses, uh, accommodation, everything is being paid for. All you have to do is, you know, do your job by studying the music and performing the music. How long is it? Well, in about six to seven weeks, actually. Six to seven? Oh, this is like a paid holiday kind of internship mm. kind of thing. Like. I would say it's an internship-ish, but... Generally speaking, it is a festival. How many... <coughs> YST got how many people? I think from this like, year... This year, we actually have, like... Uh, maybe a total of four, if I'm not wrong. Uh, this is inclusive of, actually, alumni as well. So, in terms of active uh, YST students, students... I believe I'm the only one. Last year, I think we have about four... To five, I think. Me, Wei Xiang, Javlon, uh, one, two. Yeah, maybe about five to six around there. So yeah. Cream of the crop. So let's start off by this uh, revisiting why you chose to do music. Because mm. previously in poly, you didn't do music, right? Ah, yes. So in poly, right, I did a diploma in uh, leisure and events management. Mm. So at that point of time, I mean, I did enjoy, you know, uh, the whole process of event management and also seeing different types of people in the events industry and whatnot. I mean, you know, if you do events management, you get to see different industries working together, different uh, partners working Mm. together and stuff. But, you know, um, throughout my whole poly period, I was also very, very active in my poly performing, band as well, uh, performing in general. So I was actually from the Tomasic Poly, and I joined the Tomasic Poly band. Oh, TP band. Yeah, TP band. And um, that's how I met a few various... Uh, uh, Justin. Uh, yes, Justin. Uh, still using the TP band emails. Yeah, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I totally forgot about the email already. But yeah, I, I mean, we both me and Justin, we were actually part of the main comp back then uh, in our TP band. So you are his senior? La. Yes, I was his uh, senior. Fun fact about Justin. So actually, I knew about this boy because he's actually my neighbor as well. Oh, yeah, Pastor is. Yes, Pastor is. And the thing is, right, back then when I was younger, I didn't know who was around my area. Uh. So I think it was like every weekend, I would hear this saxophone is practicing super loud. Nuisance. But, but very, very nice tunes, uh. you know. So I was wondering, like, come on, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Then... Fast forward to like um, when I was in year three, I think. Uh. Then that's where I saw this guy, this Justin fella. Yeah. And when we took the bus back home together, I asked him, hey, where do you stay? Pastor is like, oh, okay, okay, let's go back home together. We and I dropped off at my bus stop, he dropped off as well. Eh. Then I'm like, stalker. <laughs> no way. Then I asked him, 
So where do you actually stay? Oh, I stay at this block. Same block. Different block actually, just opposite us, uh, opposite me. And I'm like, let me let me guess. Are you actually the one that practices every weekend or something like playing different saxophone tunes? Then he's like, yes. So you are the one. You are the one. Thank you very much. <laughs> so yeah. So so how so what made you choose like hey uh, I'm gonna go full time music. Okay, so I think actually it was uh, when I was in year two poly, um, where I took the role of a student conductor in my poly band. Mm. And I was, I mean, obviously I was very, very immersed with music since my primary school days, secondary school days, and poly. And eventually, I actually wanted to um, transfer schools to NAFA, actually. But oh. I was um, kind of going through a, a, an episode ah. of myself, you know. So, I apologize, but um, it took me a while to really rethink, you know, Asian parents mm. and also worries and stuff. So, and also, honestly speaking, I was only left with one more year in poly. Ah, might as well finish it. So, my, yeah, exactly. Ah. Might as well finish it and learn a skill as well. 15 now, something like that. Pretty much. Then, it was in, uh, you know, when I was in NS. Mm. Um, shout out to my teacher Joe Kim, uh, where he not that Joe Kim Lim, yeah Joe hey. Kim Lim, <laughs> yeah, whereby he actually you know asked me if I wanted to do the audition at YST because he did see me uh, performing with various uh, ensembles like for example the Philharmonic Winds, Philharmonic Youth Winds mm. uh, after my graduation in poly and stuff, and so yeah, I mean I told myself why not give it a shot? Why not give myself a chance? at doing what I really, really wanted to do. And yeah, I mean, eventually I did the audition and thank you to Joachim, Brett, uh, Mario, and everybody that gave me the opportunity to do what I'm doing now. And I'm really, really happy with, you know, whatever I've been learning and performing since then. Mm. So speaking of you changing career paths what were like some initial reactions were like people telling you hey don't do it it's risky or like oh go for it i mean joking obviously supported you like because he went through a similar like process so mm. like what are some notable reactions that you got i think this was actually interesting because most of my friends uh are in you know the supportive role because huh. they see me very very uh into music actually i mean the way i perform the way i um, act with my performance and stuff mm. and they really support my <clears throat> my decision in, in doing the uh, music path in general so I guess I could say that all of them they are actually very very supportive in general but, you know real <clears throat> friends are the ones who will come to you and like hey actually you might want to think harder oh you know? for sure because uh, you're very easy to say hey go for it bro like you know <laughs> but it's, it's the yeah. so go ahead and come to you like hey you prepare yourself it's gonna be a oh yeah for sure I definitely have friends like that I, I mean my uh, primary school friend actually um, we both of us we grew up together mm. uh, we joined band together since primary school secondary school alumni band as well uh, shout out to Mahabudi school alumni band and uh, you shout out your friend also. oh yeah shout out to my long time friend uh, Wen Xiang Wen so Xiang. yeah thank you for that also I mean throughout my years of uh, experience and also throughout our years of friendship and of course realism you know getting so, back to realism so he's the one that tell you like hey bro you yeah I mean just just in general you know um, get ready for, for the half road ahead mm. and also of course you know various musicians in this inner circle also but yeah I mean I told myself I was I, I, I must be ready for it mm. you know the difficulties ahead the uh, the tough road ahead and stuff but as some, as you know, some saying would, would say, would go. I mean, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, then essentially the road ahead will be tough ahead. It will be tough mm -hmm. in general. So, I generally think that I enjoy my route. I enjoy what I'm doing. So, I think I would not regret mm. what I'm doing. But it's quite natural that, like, you know, as with any job, I think I said this before. As with any job, there are things that you don't like. Or in mm. fact, most people don't like their jobs, right? Mm. So, with music as your career and your job, I'm sure there are some parts that you don't like, right? Mm. Has, has there been any, like... 
I mean, so far with dislikes or all, no dislikes. Not yet. Yeah. Now he's still in school. Maybe next time then. I mean, I have not really teaching. You okay with teaching? I'm 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 great with. I'm I'm actually happy with teaching. You know, mm. like I mean, I do teach primary school. I do teach JCs and uh, poly as well. So certified so MO instructor. <laughs> yeah. So I do enjoy kind of like. Uh, engaging with the uh, upcoming uh, percussionists mm. uh, in the making. So, and also I think generally it is, you know, what, I mean, we want to actually educate mm. uh, the young musicians or the young Singaporeans who actually may con- may po- uh, potentially contribute to our scene. Nurture the next gen. Uh. Exactly. And I, th- and I feel that that is very, very important as um, music students as well. Because mm. true teaching we get to learn more about ourselves as well, as a, as a musician. So we were talking earlier just now about, then you mentioned something about how you initially were planning on going more of a full teaching route, and now you are starting to lean more towards the performance route. Yep. So what made you like... What made me switch? switch? I guess what I could say is, um, based on my experience with the Asian Youth Orchestra last mm. year, um, Generally, I do love performing in big ensembles because, of course, being in so many uh, wind bands, uh, concert bands. So, generally, performing would be second nature to me. I mean, of course, uh, they say that, you know, teaching is always like the safety net. I mm. totally agree. But personally, I do like to perform as well in big ensembles. And... Yeah, my goal right now is to actually wanting to get into uh, an orchestra, mm. uh, a symphony orchestra, of course, because I really do love the uh, the whole concept and also performing in general. Mm. Yeah, and performing with colleagues that you know you love to work with. So, yeah, that that would be one of my goals. I would I would like to have in my life right, right now, aside from just playing teaching. Mm. Teaching will always be a part of what we do. Your job, lah. That is for sure. But mainly, I would love to be a performer. Mm. Yep. So, yeah. I mean, be it also orchestra, be it uh, playing big bands, be it playing for jazz ensembles, etc. So, yeah. I mean, recently we did a show as well at a Tampanese Hub. Bam, 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 bam. <coughs> So that was really, really a super fun uh, performance or so. So um, thank you for the call once again. <laughs> so yeah. You know when the hotline bling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you recently came back from Exchange, yeah. Copenhagen, right? So personally for me, I went to New York about a year ago. Uh-huh. It was quite life-changing like, because yeah. it was tough as shit, man. Oh, like, yeah. wow, money ran out so fast, then you're over there like, wow, what am I? <laughs> wow, bro, then I Airbnb you, rub up, <laughs> then like, wow, then have to cook then. So, have you had any like, insights or like, discoveries about yourself? I don't know, share about your experience. Wow, okay, let's go, man. <laughs> okay, so, I guess this is the most unexpected experience that I've ever gotten from my whole exchange program was that I discovered that I actually do love experimenting with cooking. <laughs> Mm. So like, <laughs> forced to cook. No, not say forced to cook, but I mean generally because I'm a I'm an adventurer, uh. so I do love to uh, seek for new experiences and stuff. Um, so I guess cooking to me was kind of experimental and adventurous and I wanted to experiment with different types of, you know, sauces, different types of like recipes, etc. I mean okay, not gonna lie, because I didn't have a rice cooker, uh. I only cook plain noodles. That is my cup. Like Tao Xiao Mian. Ah Yes. Oh, oh, I love that. Bro, that's <laughs> why I do during NS I bring everybody love. Bro, Go check it out, Sheng Xiang. I tell you, Tao Xiao Mian is the killer. Yes. It is the life you add the peanut sauce or the chili sauce. Correct. We Everything must add. Yeah. Then I tell you, because, I mean, Asians being Asians, we love variety. Mm. You know? I mean, yes, I do, I do appreciate the European food. You know, like bread, uh, herring, curry herring, mustard herring. I all, all them, I love it. Fish. Yeah, fish. Oh. Yeah, so they actually have that for breakfast or like, as a oh, the thin, thin fish. Something like that. Ah. And you just add it on like a open sandwich. And you just eat it for like lunch or dinner. 
I mean, yeah, it is it is healthy and stuff. But you know, the Asian blood in me for twenty seven years is is very very strong. You know, it's all about the flavor. It's all about the variety. Hashtag chai peng for life. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so which is why I personally cook. Uh, you know, tau xiao mian is my is my carb once again, a vegetable and also meat. Yes, it's always a must for my dinner. Sometimes egg. Oh uh, yeah, sometimes egg as well. So, um, I believe my most memorable uh, cooking experience is actually the uh, shao rou. I oh. made an oven baked shao rou. Oh, yeah. High levels. Yeah. I mean. I was really, really interested to know how to make because my grandma, she know she makes the best roasted pork, legit. So I've always wondered how she does it, and you know, being si- being six months away away from uh, home, it makes me miss home food for mm-hmm. sure. So I was definitely adventurous, as I said. So I really, really wanted to just try it out, even though the pork cut wasn't like the best of each other, but it was similar. It was mm-hmm. close. So yeah, it was a successful uh, roast pork uh, that I made. I will put the picture here. Yeah. So yeah, and also I did like a ASMR kind of like crunch, you know, crunch, crunch. <laughs> oh, the skin. Eh? Yeah, yeah, the skin, the crackling, you know, the oh, most important nice. part. So yeah. So I mean, aside from cooking, of course, and of course, it's about managing my own time as well, because in exchange, right? I mean, you won't get much modules to mm. take, but um, I have more time to actually practice and focus uh, my time with just music in general so being away of course i didn't have much like gigs or whichever mm. so <clears throat> i was focusing more on myself and what i really want to do in in general you know i was focusing a lot on building my technique my foundation and also orchestra excerpts mm. because that's what we would do for orchestral audition so yeah i had the best experiences with my, my teacher, uh, Soren Monrad, and also my marimba teacher, Anas uh, Elton. So, and also my timpani teacher, uh, Henrik Tren. So, I really love them a lot. Oh, and also one more, uh, Jakob Weber. Really, 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 really love uh, their approach in orchestral playing uh, and percussion playing in general. So, thank you to, you know, the Royal Danish Academy of Music for their teaching and also facilities and stuff. Mm. So, yeah. Singapore better or facility-wise? I think facilities-wise, both have their pros and cons. So, so who better? Who better? Uh? Singaporean must be competitive. I, th- I think... Okay, honestly speaking, in terms of, like, rooms, ah. um, I'm sad to say that, you know, the Royal Danish Academy ah. of Music have more rooms. Oh, more rooms? Like- more rooms to practice for uh, for percussionists. Mm, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, and also because generally we need to book our rooms to practice. Ah. So, yeah, it, it gives us more space so as well. So they got more money. Like. I mean, money is one, I suppose, but I guess it's uh, more, more students resources. or so. Oh, okay. More students or so. And also space as well. Space is a very, very big uh, issue when it comes to like, you know, students or like big schools mm. as well. So, yeah, and also they are they are standalone. Whereas, I mean, of course, YST is together with NUS ah. and stuff. And oh, but they are full, a pure music school. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah, Makes just sense. like one block over here, full of music students and stuff. Whereas, and whereas YST is, yeah, I'm sure, one tower here. Ah. But, I mean, of course, it's being shared around with... And the foot of the hills of NUS. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I so, see. yeah, la. I mean, for YST side, <clears throat> we only have like three practice rooms and one main uh, studio. So, technically, we only got four practice uh, rooms. Mm. Yeah. So speaking of comparison, right, yep. between the two, do you notice any differences? I mean, there are, like, but what are some notable differences between like music students or musicians in Singapore versus mm. in Europe or like Copenhagen? Well, um, I think this would actually vary with um, mindset, I suppose, because mm. being in Singapore, I mean, coming from Singapore, uh, I mean, we are all kind of like results based. You know, mm. because it's always been drilled in our ed- education uh, scene that, you know, you got to study hard, study, 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 you know, your sciences, your maths and English since young and stuff. But whereas for, I think in uh, Copenhagen, if I'm not wrong, I heard from my pedagogy t- uh, teacher that um, the European side or the Danish will actually um, enforce music lessons to their children from young. I'm tired of this, Grandpa! That's too damn bad! 
Oh, so, so what differences between the musicians? Musicians. Yeah, so like you say now, let's say you just now you say Singapore enforce high standards, right? So yep. does that like apply for musicians also, like tanging or? I think. <clears throat> yeah, so the difference between musicians. Musicians. Or the music scene. Uh. Music scene. I mean, competitively, it really depends on the broad up. Because, like, for example, the the, what? depends on the broad up of, of each student's ah, upbringing, upbringing. Yeah, the upbringing, right. you know. Because some, let's say, some parents, they only want their children to focus on tuition, English, math, science. Mm. But there's no tuition in music because they don't allow their children to take because it is not essential per se. So, um, whereas in uh, in Europe, the the parents will actually encourage, mm. you know, their children to really just study more holistic, uh, Yeah, basically, mm. you know, I mean, I don't blame anybody or whichever, but it's just the mindset. Oh no, but what about musicians? So musicians, like musicians are- here versus musicians there. Any difference? Like? Like who practice harder or like who? Well, who practice harder? Oh, okay, this question. Example lah, uh, one on yeah. I think there is not much of a difference because mm. um, each musician has their own goal, and from what I see, right, both is actually competitively kind of like on par per se. Mm. So the things that I see in uh, in uh, in Copenhagen, right, is that. Definitely, there will be a group of people that wants to do a lot of solo works. Mm. So they are focusing on solo uh, development. Whereas there's another half that wants to do orchestral. And they are very, very hardcore in it. Mm. Because we, because I get to see some of my uh, studio members or like department friends, as they say it, uh, really focusing on orchestral auditions from in the Iceland, in, uh, let's say, in Germany. All these kind of like um, uh, opportunities. Whereas in Singapore, we are always you know uh, practicing our own orchestra excerpts, orchestra excerpts, waiting for an opportunity for you know freelancing and stuff. But then again, I mean, the chances could be slightly lower. So I mean, because there's so much less opportunity, in, Yeah, in Singapore. So like musicians there are slightly more hardcore than in Singapore and more independent. I guess that is that is the way actually. Do you? Think that might be because, like, cause previously on the previous episode, Kayo mentioned how culture of different, uh, culture of New York is different. Yep. And what they have is almost every concert ends with a standing ovation. Oh yes. So this is more of like uh, same for Copenhagen, right? Yes. So it's yes, more yes. of like culture whereby you know Westerners are more encouraging. Even yes. in Singapore, like when they see you perform, they be like, "Hey, great job, man!" But you're just yep. like. I didn't do anything, but okay, thanks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they oh, love your playing. I'm like, oh, shit, I, play- I made so many mistakes, but thanks anyways. So do you think this support from society and large is the reason behind why Western musicians are more independent and more driven? Because there's a bigger audience and a stronger audience pushing them forward. Whereas in Singapore, musicians are, you know, not essential, more in the background. So there's less motivation pushing musicians like yourself to like push the limits i guess you can put it that way actually i mean from what i see in europe like what you said also like generally the audience and stuff the standing ovation is actually very very it's a normal culture for them Mm. yeah and i do see it as well and also there's something i need to add on so in europe i don't know whether it, it, it applies for new york but um normally when people clap in in the hall it'll be like a Chaplang, right? Like, like Rojak, right? Uh. In, this is pretty amazing, but I experienced so many times whereby in Europe, all of them clap in unison. Oh, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. <laughs> Together. So, yeah. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, honestly speaking, right, from that, it really, like, wowed me. And it is a culture. Mm. A culture that isn't seen in, I guess, in Asia, at least. So, I, did, did Kayo mention something about this? Yeah, like how culture there is just different lah, you know. Like, yep. So in that episode, that's why you don't know, that's why you ask me. Yeah. God, but I caught. God, 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 but I forgot about that part. Yeah. Sorry, Kayong. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So yeah. Any other mm. lessons learned from New York or like self? Self taught uh. I mean, it's about giving myself um more confidence in, you know, my decision-making or so. Mm. You know, 
I mean, being a independent uh, music student, you need to always make the right decisions of whether you like this or don't like this. Mm. Whether some people like this or some people don't like this. But at the end of the day, my te- my teacher did tell me, did, did, did teach me this. If it sounds good, it will be good. So it really depends on what defines good to you. Mm. So yeah. yeah. So I learned that skill from my teacher over there. My teachers over there in general. So yeah. So far, any... Did I miss anything? Anything I add on? I mean, if I were to add on also, I mean, I've been to different uh, festivals mm. in Europe as well. You know, like for example, I, I've been to one in uh, the Nordlands or... Specifically, it is called the Buddha Beat Festival. Um, so we went. Spelling is here. I don't know how. Yeah. To spell that. I mean, in Singapore, some would. Okay, this this is this is like a Singaporean joke, ah. really. But I think I shouldn't say hey, over just here. Say, uh, never mind. Okay, so actually, Buddha, right? If you if you if you spell it, you may think as it like like Buddha or like Buddha, which is like B O. O D A H, but it's actually B O D O, but with a line at the O. Oh. Yeah, but you know Singaporeans, they don't know the place. Ah, oh, then they bother. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so when oh, I yeah. when I posted on my social media, right, then some some of them they eventually, hey, bodo, 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 what are they? Hey, cow, bodo. So this was a very very Singaporean thing, which I totally understand, you know. But then again, yeah, Buddha, Buddha Beat Festival. I I learned from, you know, uh, Whelan. Who, who is the current timpanist at the uh, Berlin Phil- uh, Philharmonic, uh, and also with uh, Adelaide, who uh, should, whom is a how do you say? She's a solo percussionist, uh, a very very famous one. I really really respected her as a young percussionist as well, and I guess I I would say that she's a leader in our current generation of uh, young percussionists to follow up with. So I learned techniques from them. And also, uh, like valuable lessons from uh, about knowing yourself as a musician, knowing how to calm yourself mm-hmm. down, and what are the nerves, what are the nerve wracking situations yet we have ever been and stuff, and how do we actually solve them in general? I mean, these are some things that we really need to learn as young musicians because they don't teach this in, in school. Mm-hmm.